Nice place, isn't it? Offers a lovely view of the valley. On a clear day, you can see the outlines of Duntime. Shame the reason why we came here. Yes, quite the shame. You angry with me? For not freeing Siana? For not trying to resolve this peacefully? Hmm, a bit. Though, perhaps I was fooling myself. Latching on to the notion because I'd badly wished to believe there was some way to fix everything. However, matters have simply gone too far. I must come to terms with that. Regis, let the Unseen Elder know we've arrived. Have him summon Deadlaugh. Hinthial Chesu Themias. didn't manage to find me, so you forced a meeting. Why? You know why. I've tired of guessing your human thoughts. So articulate them or leave me be. Came here to kill you. Brief and to the point. How refreshing. Well then, try, Witcher.
to me. Be gone. I can't let him. I insist. My, what a smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. Usually wear something different, better suited to my trade. Got nothing against this particular outfit, though. Just don't exactly feel comfortable in it. And I despise formal occasions. Hmm. Nothing one can't get accustomed to. Now, be so kind as to stand still.
All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Palace protocol places enormous emphasis on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else, which calls for lordly, glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Sound wistful, pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Hmm. Ceremonies. Medals honoring virtues. Just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either. And I keep thinking of the last great virtue, compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory, after all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victims' names to Detlaf. Perhaps we missed something. Regis, Bootblack didn't say anything about making deliveries when we talked to him. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. You'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters. What's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. Could be worth checking with the boot black again. Meet you by a stand. Fine. I shall await you there. Shoot the breeze with the charming lad to pass the time. The boot black? In the lower city? Intend to soil my masterpiece in the city's gutters? Promise to be careful. Oh, it's the swordsman. Good to see you. Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know. Step on up. Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on then. I'm a proponent of free speech and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the soles that wear them. Clean boots, clean soles. A fine slogan. How's business? Well enough, I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. Man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young. 
got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Why didn't you tell us this before, when we first talked? You didn't ask about beggars now, did you? Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. Each was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh, I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Where'd they get the letters? They pick them up? Get them from someone? I don't know. They'd come, hand me a letter, and walk away. I asked no questions. Geralt, allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that boot shine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, then right. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it, only to tire our lips. We'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm, please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Scram! Decent folk live here. The shelter, them living here, bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballard. Another defender of the poor, fighter for justice. Damn you, sense. We for our women and young folk living next door. When even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Decent folk you mention. Mean yourselves. Why? Do you doubt it? Hell yes. Hear that, Artois? He poking insults us. On our own turf. We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. You are one damn All right. I can take a hint. Come, time to go. I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beggars. I do not oppose going elsewhere, were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. What is this place? Poor house? You could call it that. They come here to rest and eat a hot meal. You help them, why? Because they need help. Need some information. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Garl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your, uh, wards supposed to meet him recently or soon? Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. You can question them yourselves. 
Sure all your usual beggars will be here? They're not obliged to come, of course. But they rarely find a decent meal elsewhere. So, almost all in the area eat here. Thanks. We'll wait. Nice of you to let us. My dears, I've a matter to address before I serve the soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief. For if you draw it out, your soup will go cold. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeal? We were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. You were given a letter and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. Thank you. Who else? I got the one too. Uh, gave it to the boot black. And Freshy, he got one. But he can't tell you. As he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas. It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over, or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. But I was to deliver it personally. Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightening. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. These men helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. All right, take it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there. What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. I... I must say, even I did not expect this. This time you will see to our Duquesa. It seems we underestimated Siana rather grossly. Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter has ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Siana planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtues their only link. Enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Siana, even as she had those she despised killed off one by one, leaving the Duchess for last. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons. Most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions. Ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Siana murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? From an inborn penchant for evil? Yes, yes, and yes. All seem likely, and none are mutually exclusive. But if you'd like to know for certain, you could always ask her yourself. Actually, love to learn her motives. Praiseworthy, I suppose. Sometimes one should stare evil in the face. Seems a bit strong, no? She used my friend as her tool for killing. I believe I've every right to condemn her, but I support your lust for the truth. Some philosophers think empirical examination the sole path to knowledge. 
I believe you mentioned the Duchess keeps Siana locked up. Courtiers were insisting on a harsher punishment. Much harsher. Think Anna Henrietta had to protect her sister from a lynch mob as much as she wanted to protect her subjects from a criminal. One way or another, she's locked away in a secluded wing of the palace, awaiting trial before a court of law. I'd need to get past some guards to see her. Coming with? Of course not. I shall await you at Mayor Lachey's Long. I'll not risk entering the palace after Detlaf and his minions' rampage. Besides, I vastly prefer the company of a simple mug of mandrake brew to that of the Duchess's vile sister. So, said straight up, it means you're going off to get drunk because you hate Siana. I've never been fond of categorical statements of that kind, but I admit I could not vouch for my behavior in her presence. She treated Detlaf cruelly. Caused his death in the end, and now this? Atop all that? No, Geralt. I will not go with you. I will await you at the cemetery. Halt! Need to see Siana urgently. In the matter of? Want to talk to her. It's important. Want to talk? Go see your gran at tea time. Not one locked up on the Duquesa's orders. No doing without special permission. Period. Found some information important to her case. Need an explanation. Urgently. Ah, fine then. You're that witcher who solved the murders, no? Then you for my permission, but only for a few minutes. Promise to be brief. The witcher will speak with the inmate. You can take a momentary break. As long as it's truly but a moment. Highly irregular, this. Hey, Siana. Sorry to intrude, but I gotta ask you something. I've nothing to say to you. You're the one who put me in here. Have you forgotten? Sure, but you are here. So what's the harm in talking? Got something better to do? What do you want? Be brief. This cell. Downright cozy. Second time you've been incarcerated in altogether pleasant conditions. Always seem to land on your feet. I wouldn't say that. I get no privacy here. But it is clean, because I cleaned it. They do say cleaning can be relaxing. It isn't. It's a horrible, thankless task. But I'm not one to leave anything undone. For instance, before I left Nazaire, I also tidied my room. Even made my bed. I knew I'd never return. But I despise leaving unfinished business. Messes. Loose ends. Dogged determination. Guess that's admirable. I was praised for it as a little girl. Only for that, in fact. Went to a place where Beauclair's beggars congregate. Found proof that you'd planned your sister's demise. Anna Henrietta. She was Dedloff's ultimate target from the start. Your target. Bravo, Witcher. I congratulate you on your deductive reasoning skills. But what I'd planned has nothing to do with you. Wrong. Has everything to do with me. You were hired to kill the beast. Said beast is dead. So go collect your metal and leave me alone. Why must you meddle in everything? Regis, he's always saying Dedloff was more animal-like, less human than him. Might have been so. Dedloff acted on reflex was driven by primordial instincts, whereas you're driven by cruelty, hatred, and a lust for vengeance. They hired me to kill the beast, true. Thing is, something tells me the real beast is you. You've no notion who I am or what drives me. Not particularly interested in your motives. Of course not. You're all about killing, not listening. I didn't expect you to understand. I need no sympathy. Not from you, not from anyone. I regret nothing. If I could turn back time, I'd not decide otherwise at any juncture. They all deserve to be punished. My sister, most of all. Enough. Your visit's done. Ah, oh, thank the stars.
Commander de la Tour would like to see you. Shall we go at once? Let's go. Wanna see him too. Damien. Geralt, it's about time. Ready for the ceremony. Your face doesn't look good. Though it looked even worse last I saw you. I apply a balm of Arnica. Yeah, I hardly feel it anymore. Got some important information. Anna Henrietta was supposed to be Detloff and Siana's fifth victim. You are certain of this? Completely. Found proof. Inconceivable. How could she? The murders, the mayhem she brought down on the city, were they not enough? She sought to strike down her own sister, her liege. Traitor. I must alert my men. Enlarge the Duchess's honor guard. Make certain Sylvia Anna is closely watched during the questioning. I'll see to it personally. I thank you, Witcher, for alerting me, and I appreciate your attentiveness. Very well. Let us get things underway. Don your ceremonial attire. Then you'll come with me. Her grace awaits. In the guild's name, I beg your assistance, your enlightened highness. Without barrels, production will come to a stop, and it will be the end of us. You lost them all in the fire. These are horrible tidings. Oh, we are most dreadfully saddened. Yes, your enlightened highness all. Once the beasts had clawed their way into the warehouse, the whole place went up in flames. I shall dispatch a palace guardsman to examine the site of the blaze. If things are as you say, fitting compensation shall be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Thank you, your enlightened highness. Your grace, Geralt of Rivia has arrived. My dear subjects, we come now to our next point of business. Of all the duties which fall upon my shoulders, as the ruler of this dominion, this duty is dearest to my heart. For now, we shall award the Order of Vitis Vinifera, Tucson's highest honor. Geralt of Rivia, slayer of the beast of Beauclair, step forth. <coughs> We bestow the distinction upon the Witcher, who saved Beauclair from the terrible beast. Such is our desire. May this symbol serve as a reminder to all that the Witcher shall forever remain a friend of Beauclair. In more familiar terms now, I thank you immensely, Geralt. Damien has your reward for you. After all, it was but a contract. Thank you. I have a small surprise for you, in addition. I give you more than a dozen barrels of Son Real, a wine normally reserved for the ducal table. The gustatory experience of a lifetime awaits. Are you content? I am, and truly grateful, Your Grace. Sadly, I'm afraid I have to sour the mood. It's Sianna. She plotted to have you killed, Duchess. Planned to use Dedloff. You were to be the Beast's fifth victim. This cannot be true. You're mistaken. You must be. I have proof. I do not believe it.
In a moment I shall speak to Siana. Will you assist me? You returned my sister to me, yet what you tell me now I find devastating. I've come to doubt that I can judge her fairly. I'd far prefer to learn you're mistaken, Geralt. I'm not. In fact, I'd recommend you be particularly careful around her. You exaggerate, Witcher. She is my sister. I know well how to speak to her. If my presence will help in any manner, of course I'll stay. We shall now question a person implicated in the murders which recently ravaged our fair city of Beauclair. Captain de la Tour, show Sylvia Anna in. The Witcher will take part in our talk. The Duchess requested I be present. You have committed crimes. Grave crimes. Yet you are my sister. And my heart does not allow me to treat you as a common criminal. Nor does it let me believe you sought my demise. My heart yearns to know you were swayed by the monster Detlaf. You yourself would never stoop so low. Thus I have asked Geralt to advise me, as one impartial. I shall now hear what he has to say. No matter the mitigating circumstances, whatever they may be, Siana is a criminal and should be tried as such. And punished as such. Her guilt is clear. Your words sadden me greatly, Witcher. But I cannot deny their logic. Siana, you shall be tried and given a fitting punishment. Yet we shall never cease to be family. As Duchess, I shall have to judge you, but as your sister, I shall never stop loving you. Will you forgive me? I shall never forgive you. some flowers, a wreath, or... I've none. Sold everything. I was just on my way out. No sense hanging about with nothing to do. Should come as no shock, sir. Had the funeral, folk took it all. Men, women, children, all wished to lay a bouquet on the Duchess's grave. Wind flowers, peonies, gladioli. But she liked common roses best. I know, her ladies-in-waiting would come here at times. 
might choose the loveliest blooms for her. Fragrant, big petals, the kind that last a long time. Ah, I've still not come to terms with it. To be killed by her own sister. How could it happen? Anna Henrietta wanted to believe there was still hope for Siana, that she'd show remorse. She reached a hand out to her. Too soon. Too trusting. Oh, I know you. You're that witcher from the north. The one that saved us from the beast. Mm-hmm. Could say that. Wait here. Take these. Thought you were out of flowers. I put a bouquet aside. I was to take it to her myself. But you have it. I know you held the Duchess dear. How much do I owe you? Not a copper. Keep your coin and raise a toast in her memory tonight. Do just that. Farewell. Witcher, I was certain you'd departed. Couldn't. Anna Henrietta was... Wondrous. Beautiful. Good. The best ruler one could hope to have. Yet I let her down. Don't be so hard on yourself. No one expected Siana to do that, persist to the end. And none of us did anything to stop her. Because there was nothing we could do. Uh, I suppose you are right. But when someone so beloved dies, one cannot help but search one's soul for blame. And even the hardiest knights grow faint-hearted then. Come to pay my respects. Bid the Duchess farewell. White roses. They were her favorite. Go inside then. She lies in the ducal crypt. In one room with her murderer. Despite my protests. What? Who decided that? The Regent's Council. A pack of old men who've statutes and codices for hearts. Ducal blood flowed in Siana's veins, and she was never legally disinherited. So they ruled she should lie alongside Anarieta. I regret it ended this way, that I failed to prevent it. Hope you can forgive me. Rest in peace. Stylish crypt, quite subdued. Yes, this is the kind of eternal resting place I dream of. Moments like this. I never know if you're joking or serious. Serious, Geralt, serious. It's remarkably peaceful, subtly charming to the hilt. A perfect match for the Duchess's dignity. Ah, oh, you humans, you'll never cease to amaze me. To feel despair in the face of natural processes to which you are predestined. I've come to take you from this place, my friend. Dare say you deserve a speck of respite after the mad whirl of the last few days. All those deaths I failed to prevent. Feel pretty awful right about now. Can't help thinking I could have done more. 
Now two sons left without a ruler, or more accurately, chaos rules here. Hand in hand with despair. Duchess won over people's hearts. All Beauclair now weeps for her. A mass outburst of emotion. Well, it seems her subjects have adopted some of their recent ruler's traits. Why the sarcasm? Thought you liked Donna Henrietta. I did. And I do truly rue her passing. Me too. Then let us drink. Always seemed to me you were a very complicated creature by nature. Not one to resort to such simple methods like drinking your worries away. There exist worries for which they're quite simply. It's no other medicine. Whatever you say about Siona, you gotta admit she was unbending. That she was. I do admit it. Though in her case, it would have been better if she had been a tad more mm, philosophical, pausing from time to time to reflect on the propriety of her actions. True. How do you find my personal brew? Not too strong. Just right. Credit the local mandrake of the Alrauna Diabolus variety for that. The tubers which grow in this area's volcanic soil have an altogether unique flavor profile and display a remarkably uncommon dark brown tint. Fascinating. All I can say is this batch turned out excellent. Indeed. It might be wise to stockpile some roots for the future. Would you care to accompany me? You decide to go root picking now? It's dark out. Ah, oh, Geralt. Even were I generously to assume it had simply slipped your mind that I am a vampire and thus need no light to see, I'd never believe you had also forgotten that you likewise have absolutely no trouble seeing in the dark. So, shall we? If you think it's a good idea, let's go. But I think you might be forgetting one thing. Fresh mandrake root of this variety is highly toxic, even to a witcher. Ah, not a problem. I never forget matters of safety and hygiene in alchemy. Here, gloves and a mask. Don them, and you shall be in no danger. Thanks. Right then, let's go. Those Bruxae, they called you a traitor. Alas, we have a very simple code of honor, we vampires. So simple you might call it trivial. Either one is with us, unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances, or... Won't let it go, will they? They will not. Fortunately, we have another rule. An unwritten one, and just as trivial as the first. It is neatly summarized in the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is why I must leave Toussaint. For a vastly long time, most like. Yeah, I get it. Oh, let us make for my camp. I have an overwhelming desire to have another drink. Mmm, supreme bouquet. Firm, defined beginning, then develops gently, rising to a, a startling finish. Don't you think? Not much of a connoisseur. Then it is high time you started your education. After all, the Corvo Bianco vineyard is now yours. By the way, I left a gift for you at your new home, on the nightstand. <laughs> Thanks. Mind telling me what it is? A trifle. That will nonetheless be useful should you need mutagens. Incidentally, have you thought about what you'll do with your prize? Shall you hang your swords over the mantle and take to pruning vines? Know what? Think I just might. <laughs> Come on now, don't laugh. Maybe not today or tomorrow. But one day I'll want to see what it's like to just wake up every day in my own bed. 
Oh, stop, please. Sounds so sentimental, my fangs have begun to hurt. Then what? Will you begin writing your memoirs like Dandelion? I can remember a night, not too far from here if I'm not mistaken. We hid in a cave while a blizzard raged all about. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? we just set off to rescue Ciri from Vilgefortz. Oh, our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly. But that first stay in Beauclair, far calmer than this one. Seemed like a land straight out of a fairy tale back then. Its sole problem, cellar's too small to accommodate all that wine. Appearances, Geralt. Appearances like Mamoons and Dopplers deceive. So what did become of Vilgefortz? Killed him. Sure wasn't easy, though. What about you? Any idea where you'll go? Distance is of the essence. I thought I might venture south. Nilfgaard? Why ever not? The Nilfgaardians are a modern society. None there believe in vampires anymore. This fact alone could be very useful to one wishing to remain incognito. Hmm. Interesting point of view. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer? So we shall, my friend. We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do. Actually, I'd love to go home. Master Witcher. Some unknown individual barged into the residence. I resisted as best I could, but to no avail. Who is it? Alas, they did not do me the basic courtesy of introducing themselves. In the flesh. I thought you were in Kavir. I got tired of waiting for you, so I decided to head to Toussaint. Catch some sun, see how things are going. You said it would only take a moment. Things are pretty much wrapped up, luckily. We'll be able to head north soon. I hope you're not upset I came like this. Without warning. True, I haven't always been fond of surprises. They remind me of work. The law of surprise, surprise child. But I think I've changed my mind. Seems surprises can actually be pleasant. Very pleasant. Let's go outside. There's this one cozy spot you're gonna love. How are things in Kuvir? Amazingly boring and predictable. Council meetings mainly concern trade matters. Tariffs, storage regulations, that sort of thing. Missing the excitement? You know the Athiri saying, may you live in interesting times? Well, I've already done that, and now I'm looking for a bit of quiet. The other mages I brought with me from Novigrad, or who made it north on their own, feel the same. You wouldn't recognize them. No conspiracies, cabals, plotting. They just sit there and work for the good of the kingdom. Sometimes I think it's all too lovely to be true. That something's bound to happen. Another war or some other horror. <sighs> but for now, it's nice. 
And once you finish your business here and come join me, it'll be even better. So, how do you like my vineyard? I think you know the answer to that. I like it a lot. House is big, but not showy. Lovely location. Perfect for romantic getaways. Just finished some remodeling. Paid through the nose for it, but I think it was worth it. There are already some new saplings and flowers around the grounds, but I think it's still missing something. Hmm. Maybe a hedge maze? With a statue in the center? One that's stately and nude. Oh, Geralt. Don't bring up that ball. The wine got to my head and I... Not bringing it up to tease, but to reminisce. That evening, it was magic. And your dress, you looked lovely in it. I've got it with me. I could put it on one evening. We'll dine outside by candlelight, listen to the music of the cicadas. Hmm? Can't wait. How'd you find me? Kavir's a long way off. I have my ways, Geralt. A hydromancy, for example. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, what becomes of us? See anything else in the reflection? Mm hmm. Zoltan moves in. Please tell me you're joking. <laughs> you can breathe easy. Far as I know, he settled down in Novigrad and has no intention of budging. In all seriousness, though, I did see a few scraps of our future, but. I'd rather not tell you exactly what. Why not? Because you said you've grown to like pleasant surprises. This is your first time in Tucson, right? Want me to show you around a bit? Sorry, but I've already made plans. Oh? What are you going to do? Lie down in the sun, and not move an inch. Ah, right. A packed schedule. Not overdoing it a tad. Oh, gotta get the most of this weather before I return north. Know that joke about how to tell when summer has come to Kavir? The rain isn't quite so cold. <laughs> and sadly, that's not far from the truth. Oh, I shouldn't have told you that. Now you'll change your mind and not come join me. I wouldn't worry about that. Mind if I leave you here alone for a moment? Just a moment. <laughs> 